The history of life on Earth is a tale of great empires that rise and fall. One of the most fearsome empires belonged not to man, but to a beast called Hyenodon. For more than 20 million years, they reigned spectacularly spreading across the continents and standing at the top of the food chain. They hunted massive prey, confronted dangerous rivals and seemed invincible. So why did the Hyenodon Empire collapse? The secret lies in their greatest weapon, their unique teeth and the emergence of a new, more adaptable generation of rivals. This is the story of how a ruler was dethroned, a lesson written in fossilized bone across millions of years. Imagine unearthing a fossil jaw so large and armed with blades so sharp that the first words to leave your mouth are hyena tooth. That was exactly what happened in 1838 when French scientists studying strange remains from the rocks of Europe decided that the best name for this predator was Hyenodon. To 19th century eyes, the resemblance seemed obvious. The animal's teeth looked like the shearing tools of modern hyenas. Its jaw was long and narrow and its whole skull suggested a specialist meat eater. But the label turned out to be misleading. What had been taken for a connection with a living carnivore was nothing more than coincidence shaped by the demands of a similar diet. The result was a name that stuck, even though the creature it described had no real kinship with hyenas at all. When paleontologists placed hyenodon within the order Creodonta, they believed they were dealing with an early forerunner of modern carnivores. At the time, classification often meant finding animals with similar shapes and shelving them together, which made the confusion easy to understand. Both groups bore the hallmark of cutting teeth that slid past each other like scissors, the kind of design you expect in an animal that thrives on tearing flesh. Yet the resemblance was an illusion produced by convergent evolution. As more fossils and better tools came into play, it became clear that the similarities covered up deep differences in ancestry. Creodonts were their own line, a separate experiment in building top predators and not the ancestors of cats, dogs or hyenas. That realization framed creodonts as an evolutionary false start. They were powerful, efficient, and for a time, highly successful, but they were not built on the blueprint that would eventually dominate mammalian carnivory. The reach of hyenodon makes this point clear. It rose during the Eocene about 42 million years ago and survived into the Miocene more than 20 million years later. Fossils have been uncovered across a staggering range from North America to the far corners of Eurasia and even into Africa. Few predators in Earth's history maintain such a long tenure across so many landscapes. Scattered bones tell of their dominance, jaws pulled from the dust of South Dakota molars, recovered from the Brule Formation skulls, lying in the riverbeds of France, and skeletons eroding from the hills of Saskatchewan. Each discovery paints part of the picture of a predator empire that spanned continents. The animals themselves varied enormously. Some were no bigger than a weasel, weighing only five kilograms, quick enough to chase small vertebrates through undergrowth. Others were titans. Hyenodon gigas, for instance, may have weighed nearly 400 kilograms, with a head longer than a man's torso, and teeth suited to slicing enormous strips of meat from a rhino-sized prey. That diversity let different species carve up the food web, occupying niches from stealthy hunters of small game to apex predators attacking megafauna. Their rigid dental design locked them into eating flesh almost exclusively, unlike the more flexible jaws of carnivora, which could adapt to bone-crushing omnivory or even fishing. That contrast explains why one branch would fade while the other continued to grow. So the name hyena tooth is best seen as a historical misunderstanding. What you are really looking at in hyenodon is the peak product of a lost branch of mammalian predators one that filled the vacuum after the dinosaur and ruled across continents before leaving the stage to others. That early misclassification now tempts us to ask a deeper question, what exactly gave this animal its fearsome reputation as a killer? What made Hyenodon's bite so feared? It wasn't just raw strength. The terrifying part was that its teeth sharpened themselves every time the jaws closed, creating an ever ready weapon designed to cut. When you picture its skull, think of a rigid structure built almost entirely for hunting efficiency. Long, narrow and proportionally massive for its body size, the skull was paired with a surprisingly small brain case. That imbalance says a lot about priorities. This animal wasn't designed around calculating complex strategies or social coordination. It was an executioner built around its mouth. With most of its anatomy emphasizing killing power, 
Hyena Don shows how nature sometimes bets everything on physical tools rather than behavioral flexibility. That small brain raises a fair question. How does a predator with limited intelligence manage to dominate ecosystems for millions of years? The answer lies in its teeth. Among mammals, no group before carnivora built such specialized cutting tools. Hyenodon's teeth were dominated by carnassials, the long blade-like molars that acted less like traditional grinding teeth and more like precision scissors. Instead of crushing, they sliced. Each bite could cleave flesh from bone in clean, efficient strips. These weren't teeth designed to gnaw lazily or process a variety of foods. They locked the animal into a hypercarnivorous lifestyle, one dependent on flesh at the expense of everything else. The specialization didn't stop there. Studies of their enamel microstructure and wear patterns point to something remarkable. Unlike the dulling teeth of most predators, hyenodon's occluding surfaces maintained sharp edges through constant use. As upper and lower teeth slid past one another, they ground into shapes that kept them sharp, essentially self-correcting with every bite. The teeth could remain razor effective, which gave the animal a dependable blade set for its entire adult life. That design came with another surprise. Microscopic grooves and gouges preserved on fossil enamel show that while flesh was the primary target, Hyenodon often tackled bone as well. Zigzag structures within the enamel known as hunter Schrieger bands increased resistance to stress, hinting that occasional bone crunching wasn't out of the question. For an animal specialised around slicing this extra toughness broadened its options when feeding. The rest of the anatomy supported this cutting machine. A heavy skull demanded support and evidence from attachment sites on the vertebrae and back of the head point to thick neck muscles capable of controlling such a weaponized cranium. Compare its body to modern carnivores and you can see different approaches. Rather than the flexible, adaptive frame of a big cat, Hyenodon likely resembled a more rigid, heavy-set predator. Its jaws clamped, neck braced, body anchored. It was built to subdue large prey through sheer restraint and ripping power. Within the genus, however, you find variation. At one end, there are lighter, more gracile species with slender skulls and quicker builds, probably adapted for hunting smaller prey. At the other giants like H. Gigas carried skulls half a meter long with muscle setups optimized for overpowering slow, heavy herbivores. These adaptations gave the genus extraordinary efficiency, yet also imposed limits. Once designed as a meat slicing specialist, Hyenodon couldn't shift into bone crushing omnivory or scavenging versatility like later carnivora. Their bodies were locked in one roll, formidable but inflexible. They lived as near perfect flesh shears, their success tied tightly to prey abundance. Mechanics can explain the cutting machine, but understanding how it operated in its ecosystems requires looking at its role among prey and rivals. Picture a world where one family of predators endured longer than our own species has even existed, spreading over continents, feeding on prey of every size and shaping the very fabric of ancient ecosystems. From the middle Eocene into the early Miocene, Hyenodon filled that role. For more than 20 million years, its species could be found across North America, Eurasia, and even into Africa, adapting again and again as climates shifted and herbivore communities were reshaped. That kind of rain raises an obvious question. How could a single genus remain at the top for so long while environments changed around it? The answer lies in both diversity and specialization. Hyenodon did not consist of just one animal, but a network of related species, some no larger than a weasel, others massive predators weighing several hundred kilograms. This range allowed them to partition the ecosystem among themselves. Smaller forms targeted early horses like Mesohippus, rabbit-sized mammals, and tiny browsing herbivores, while the larger species went after big games such as hornless rhinos and brontotheres, creatures as large as elephants with skulls shaped like battering rams. In Africa and Eurasia, fossil evidence shows them feeding on camels, oreodonts, and primitive deer-like ungulates. By dividing prey sizes among their own genus, Hyenodon could exploit nearly every herbivore community present across their wide territory. Yet they were never alone. Their hunting grounds often overlapped with other predators who were equally formidable. 
Nimravids, sometimes called false saber-tooth cats, evolved enormous canines and a cat-like build, making them competitors for many of the same medium-sized herbivores. Amphicyanids or bear dogs grew into massive omnivores and carnivores that sometimes reached sizes comparable to living bears. And then there were the entelodonts, the so-called hell pigs, huge pig-like mammals with bone-crushing jaws, terrifying rivals that could threaten even large hyenodon around carcasses. Fossils found in formations like Calf Creek in southern Canada tell us this was not a simple predator-prey hierarchy, but a crowded stage where each carnivore pushed against others for resources. Direct evidence of this struggle survives in the fossils themselves. Paleontologists have studied skulls bearing puncture wounds, almost certainly created by carnivore canines, including marks that fit the tooth patterns of hyenodon. In some cases, the bites occur on the skulls of other predators, a snapshot of violent encounters over prey or territory. These scars and fractures add an extra layer of detail, showing us hyenodon not just as hunters of herbivores, but as active participants in predator-on-predator -predator conflict. Their dominance in the food web is clear from the overwhelming size disparity with many of their rivals. The largest species like Hyenodon horridus and Hyenodon grandis fed on prey much heavier than what other carnivores in their environment could handle. By monopolizing megafaunal herbivores, they faced less direct competition and secured the top positions in ancient ecosystems. Meanwhile, their smaller relatives slotted into intermediate roles, reducing rivalry through ecological separation. This division of labor across species made the genus unusually resilient. For millions of years, this predator empire shaped the balance of herbivores and carnivores across continents. But even the most dominant reign begins to show fractures and debates about how Hyenodon truly moved and hunted, open the door to questions about just how invincible they really were. Was Hyenodon a lumbering brute that relied on slow power, or was it a lightning fast ambush predator capable of quick strikes? The truth is, fossils don't give one simple answer. Different studies of its skeleton suggest very different lifestyles, and the debate shows how variation inside this genus makes hyenodon much harder to pin down than a single predator stereotype. Some species hint at pursuit hunting on open ground, others at climbing or ambush, and the evidence often depends on which part of the skeleton you look at and which species you study. Examinations of elbow joints in the North American species hyenodon horridus point toward a predator built for running. The shape of the humerus and articulating surfaces look closer to what you see in cursorial mammals, animals adapted for speed and endurance. That means H. horridus may have chased prey like early horses across floodplains, catching them after long pursuits. But European fossils suggest something entirely different. The small species H. exiguus shows an inner ear structure that points to a more complex way of moving. Its semicircular canals, which help with balance, resemble those of animals that climb or make sudden changes in movement. The proposed conclusion is semi-arboreal behavior. A predator capable of darting through wooded terrain, maybe chasing small mammals up inclines or ambushing them with quick bursts of speed. This disagreement illustrates both the challenge and the richness of reconstructing hyenodon. A genus with species ranging from phyke five kilograms to nearly 400 kilograms could not have all hunted in the same way. It makes sense that some lean toward grappling and ambush using brute strength to bring down heavily built prey, while others use staying power to run down nimble herbivores. Even tooth shape and body proportions support this mosaic view. Studies of H. horridus and H. crucians suggest they combined an initial leap with some level of pursuit, while giants like H. gigas almost certainly relied on size and force rather than agility. Reconstructions in paleo art have mirrored these shifting interpretations. You'll find older images showing Hyenodon as a stout, bearish animal with a thick body and limited speed, stalking rather than chasing. More recent portrayals often show sleeker cat-like hunters with H. horridus sprinting after herds of Mesohippus depicted in dynamic running poses. These artistic changes aren't just aesthetic choices, they reflect real scientific disagreements about posture movement and hunting strategy, and they shape how the public imagines these animals.
Uncertainty here is not a weakness of the fossil record, but a feature. When we say Hyenodon, we are not talking about one design, but a wide empire of species with multiple lifestyles. Some resembled bear analogues, others acted more like pursuit cats, and still others exploited niches with agility in forested ground. Modern comparisons help too. Think of how cheetahs, leopards and bears all occupy predator roles today but solve the problem of hunting in very different ways. The variety inside Hyenodon mirrored that same spread. What emerges is not a single image of a predator typecast for eternity, but a genus that experimented within the limits of its rigid dental design. Adaptable in lifestyle across species but constrained in anatomy, Hyenodon maintained dominance for millions of years. Yet this success only lasted until evolution produced challenges capable of even greater flexibility and innovation. Hyenodon's story shows how raw specialization can dominate ecosystems, but also how it sets limits. Their slicing jaws made them apex hunters, yet that narrow design left little room for adjustment once climate shifted and prey communities changed. Meanwhile, carnivora evolved with more adaptable teeth and relatively larger brains, allowing them to process varied foods and explore new hunting strategies. Step by step, they filled niches once ruled by creodonts until none remained. In deep time, survival was not about being the strongest predator of the moment, it was about being flexible enough to endure waves of change.